start with traditional railing. Continuing with building my deck, I'm going to show you how I installed three different types of railing in one space. The first being very straightforward and traditional. The second is on a diagonal going on a staircase. Then the third is the removable railing so that I can hit golf balls. For each section, which typically spans six to seven feet, there is a post on either end. These are connected with a two by four rail at the bottom and also at the top. Then balusters are the vertical parts that span between the two rails connecting them. My old look on the house was 100% wood, but since I'm building new, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to something easier to maintain as well as give it an updated look. First, I'm gonna need to set the post. We plan for the location of these posts back on the framing step and added in blocking so that I would have a sleeve essentially on the deck to slip the post down into the framing. However, know that if you have an existing deck and want to change your look, there are post base mounts that will allow you to connect a post to the top of a deck. Next is to add in the rails. I'm using this new to me system by Titan Railing that makes this quick and easy. The system comes with these two mating parts where the idea is you screw part A to the post, then part B to the end of the two by four rail. Then you slide the rail into the post. And I'm not gonna hammer it all the way in right now because I wanna go through and mark off for a few things that I'll show you in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same on the bottom. On these parts, I make sure the parts are flush with what will be the top of the rail. Then pre-drill and secure it with the screw. Perfect. Next, I move on to the next step, which is marking off the baluster locations. To do this, I pop the rails out and move them to the saw horses. So this is an example on what I'm about to do over there. And the first thing to do is, is put in these kind of like base shoes that will receive the balusters. In order to do this, I'm first gonna do the layout for all of these screws and then go in and screw all these down. Code states that you can't have larger than a four inch gap. So these are all spaced to be less than four inches. Part of the box is actually the four inch layout that you need. So now I'm just gonna use this. Found center on both. Now I'm gonna go through and mark where these are evenly spaced with a pencil all the way to the end. It might seem a little tedious, but it isn't any more tedious than having to cut to length each wooden baluster, miter one in or two, then finding the spacing and securing in place with the nailer. At least with this system, you won't ever have to refinish or replace these once they are set. Oh my gosh, that's so simple. Rinse and repeat. Next, the rails can be slid back into place. Then the last step is to click into place the balusters. This is the fun part. Click, 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 click. The system is gonna be so quick and easy. Watch this, guys. Instead of having to fiddle fuss, and believe me, I know about fiddle fussing because look at all those wooden balusters. I bet I could put in five of these sections in the amount of time it took me to do those sections. And it is as simple as that, folks. The system I worked out when doing this was I would go through and click in each baluster and twist the top cap into place. After I went through all the sections doing that, I quickly went back and twisted each one of the bottom caps until they seated all the way and I called it done. Done. Good job. Okay, and that, my friends, is how to install very straightforward traditional railing. Next, let's move on to how to install railing on stairs. 
The main concept is the exact same. So in this section, I'm just gonna cover the differences. I already have my post in, but I will show you how to set those in just a minute. The first thing you wanna do is get your dimension on setting where the railing needs to go. And it doesn't matter where you do take this measurement from, as long as it's consistent from one post to the next. So on these, I actually measured from the top of the post down before cutting it, but you could also go from this step up as long as whenever you go to your other post, you go from the same point. So I'm going from this step up. Make a mark, make a mark, and then you can pop a chalk line and then that's gonna give you the height that you need to set the bottom rail. You can also do that in order to find the top diagonal here, cut it with a circular saw. Now that I have this chalk line, I'm gonna hold my board up. As you can see, it's cut long, and this is so that I can go to the inside, trace my angle needed, and while I'm here, I'm also gonna label this as bottom one. And that way I don't get it mixed up. Since I'm gonna be using this Titan hardware, I need to subtract this dimension from these. So I'm gonna hold it up into place. I'm gonna put two of them, because one's gonna go on this end, one's gonna go on that end. And then that way, I need to cut out all of this. I do recommend you invest in a good blade at the start of a big project like this, and you won't regret it. This nail slicer cuts cleanly on boards with nails embedded in it, just as well as it cuts brand new boards. Next, the end hardware is placed on just like before, but one thing to watch for. On this, this is gonna not accept this long screw without punching through, but they provide short screws for these applications. So just make sure you're paying attention to the wood and switching up your screws. those into place then mark off the baluster spacing on the traditional railing that spacing is four inches and you can use the box as the layout but whenever you're going at a diagonal we're actually going to move to five and a half inch spacing so i already found center of my board and i'm going to go two and three quarter one way and two and three quarter the other way squares for the win. Something I like to do to make moving these locations quicker is use my combination square to transfer the location to the opposite rail. Whenever pre-drilling for these, instead of going in straight like the, like the traditional railing, you need to go in at this diagonal that the screw needs to set in. So with that, whenever I go here, you can start the bit and then lean it over. with the diagonal ones, there's actually a key on them to where they can only go in, to where these two points go into these two holes. So you can pop it together first, then insert the screw into the center, and now it can be placed into the different locations. Then everything else from here is the same. Pop in the balusters and twist the caps until they seat all the way. The third and final section is the removable railing that I made custom for my deck so that I could hit golf balls off this end. Let me show you the end product so that you have a visual as I show you the steps on how we made it. Planning for this section actually started back on the framing step. Before we laid down decking, Jacob and I had to pause and put in the receiving sleeves for these metal posts. To create them, I first cut my metal joints down to length. By the way, this is the same nail slicer blade. Even after I cut multiple joints of metal square tubing, it's still making great cuts on my wooden boards. I passed all of my cut links to Jacob, who then used a step bed in order to make some holes. Some of these holes are only big enough for threads of the screws to pass through, while others are big enough for the entire head of the screw to pass through. This is so next we could secure them to the deck's framing. The hole closest to me is big enough for the entire screw and head to pass through, but the hole on the opposite side is smaller so that the head is captured on the inside, which then secures it to the framing. These are placed high enough to come out flush with the deck boards we'll put on next. 
Now let me show you the post that goes into these sleeves. We're still using Western Red Cedar posts, but a channel large enough to fit the tubing was cut into one side. Then these holes are only large enough for the threads to pass through untouched, but the screw head is captured. I was working on the other railing as Jacob was working on the section. And one thing he ran into was the screw heads holding the sleeve on, interfering with the post sliding by it. So Jacob used a maul to hit in the sides on the bottom of these posts. And this was enough to allow the railing to pass the screw heads without interfering. So cool. So a lot of, been, a lot of people have been saying, oh, it should slide. Where is it gonna slide to? Because we originally played around with the idea of making it slide backwards that way, but then we would have to miss this post and then you just have this long unsupportedness and then everywhere you go. So picking it up and moving it out of the way really was the best solution for this. Almost everything from this point on was the exact same, except I didn't use the Titan rail hardware to connect the rails to the post. Instead, I used Spax lags to secure them. With this section being removable, the structure's integrity couldn't come from the post like on the other sections. By the way, I am fully expecting to get a lot of comments on removable railing not being to code. That is 100% correct. So if you live in an area with city jurisdiction, then know this will not pass. After getting the structure built, it was placing the clips, then the balusters, which is the same process as before and just as quick. And that is three different types of railing on this deck. If you're still hanging with me, let me show you the finishing touches, which is adding a top cap. This is just a small little detail added. Run it through the table saw and put a nice little bevel on. It'll have to be sanded afterwards, but we'll do that after, after it gets installed. The way this is secured is I would use a pre-drill to go in from the top in order to secure any end that was on a top of a post. I'm once again using stainless steel screws here because galvanize will leave those black marks on your wood once it gets wet, but stainless won't. I'm using my combination square to make sure the overhang is uniformed all the way down the line. Just make sure you're always using the same reference. For example, don't use the post one time and then the top rail on another. So on this diagonal railing, kind of two different ways that you can do it. One, you can absolutely leave it square like this and just butt it up because then this railing will come in and overhang it. However, a different option is that you can actually do a plumb line and cut this to where it's gonna be vertical. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use torpedo level here in order to get a plumb line. And then I'm gonna cut that like that. Now my posts are covered by a top rail, but if yours are exposed, they need protection against rot. Post tops decay because the end grain soaks up moisture like a sponge. Metal caps are the best solution, but remember post size varies. A four x four is typically three and a half inches, but they can be bigger or smaller. The same goes for six by six posts. That's what's so brilliant about the cap claw post caps. They lock onto any post of any size. You just have to push the cap onto the post and that's it fast and easy, not only for a brand new deck, but also an existing one. I'd love to do a link in the description to check them out. Ugh, it's just so pretty. I honestly have a hard time not constantly walking out of the house just to look at it. I love the Western Red Cedar with the black baluster look. I love the updated feel the Titan system has over the old rustic look. Here's what the porch looked like before. Then here is what I switched it to. Once I committed to the idea of going with this fresh look, I've actually been changing out the top railing on my entire house a little bit at a time. All right, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, because there's still plenty to go on this tech series. We'll see you on my next video.